Age of Arousal. Okay. How, what inspired um, that play? Okay, so great secondhand book a store around mm -hmm. me called Balfour Books, mm -hmm. and they had a bargain bin outside mm -hmm. and everything for a dollar. Right. And I pick up this book called The Odd Women. Mm -hmm. Who knows? And I look over and it says five Victorian spinsters. And I just, I was sold. I knew mm. at that moment that I would write something either based on it or something, and it talked about the women's movement, which I'd always wanted to know more about, the women's mm -hmm. movement in England at the turn of the century. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to more, know more about suffragettes, so, which it's not really about, but I wanted mm -hmm. to get into that world. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to write a play with mostly women. Mm -hmm. So I didn't read it for the longest time. I read it. And George Gissing is an acquired taste. You know, if I'd picked up Somerset Maugham and messed with it the way I messed with Gissing's novel, I think, you know, it's not a well-loved classic, but many people know of it and like it. Right. And it's very, very dark and very dour, but it's also got this great central premise, which is the school for, I think I made it into secretaries. Right. And I read it and I thought, oh, God, this is really, you know, this heavy middle section and all this stuff. But if I could do, like, I'm never going to do a traditional adaptation of something. Like, I can't go there. I have to mess with it. Mm -hmm. I have to be rebellious with it. Yeah. So I had to rebel against Gissing. Yeah. And, and I, I knew I was going to do stuff with it, and I took it to the Shaw Festival. And initially I did a fairly reasonable adaptation, which had weird things in it. Mm -hmm. And then when the Shaw didn't do it that year, I thought, wait a minute, why am I doing, why do I do what I want to do? Yeah. And I started kicking this thing out with absolutely no respect talk about appropriation, <laughs> no respect for the book itself, mm -hmm. except the things that are, I believe are strong and wonderful in it. Mm -hmm. I changed characters, I mixed characters together, I changed plot lines, mm -hmm. I cut characters, and then I thought, it's still not me, it's still costume drama, and it's never going to be interesting, it's just costume drama, that you get too respectful, and then you lose what's vital, mm -hmm. you know? And so I just started playing around with something that I did in the Darling family, which is I accidentally changed the font, font to italics. Mm -hmm. And I started to write what they were thinking, these kind of outbursts. Mm -hmm. And because I, was more in, I, I wasn't interested in what we often see with the Victorians, is a stiff up, upper lip and you know somehow underneath that there's all this turgid emotion. Mm -hmm. But I wanted the turgid emotion out there. And I want the sexuality out there, because there's another mystery of the, the, the Victorians, that they didn't have sex, or they were weird about sex, or mm -hmm. all this. So I just started writing these rants, these explosions of what they would say. And, and I did it for all the characters, and I did it within scenes. I did it long things in the middle of a five or six character scene. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea how you would actually do it, but I felt free. And I felt like, however physically you would do it on the stage, that this was right. This was how I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then the Shah really didn't want to do it. <laughs> because, oh. But I figured other people would, and eventually the Shah Festival did do it. Mm -hmm. But it was weird. When, I, when they started speaking their thoughts in the middle of scenes, you mm -hmm. could just see, like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. But uh, Karen Hines found a way to do it in the first production, yeah. and that thing has had 15 or 16 productions. It's, got, it's gone international, it's gone mm. to the States, it's gone to all kinds of places, and it's a very hard play to direct, mm -hmm. but once, once you get it, it's really fun and very funny, mm -hmm. and I, I just love doing it. You know, when I see that now, I think, how did I, how did I get there? Mm -hmm. You know, when I got there, by following the sort of song lines of the characters, the primal lines of the characters, and, and coming from that place. Mm -hmm. And boy, I, you know, it, when, it, when it works, it really, really works. Mm -hmm. And people are delighted and oh. shocked by it, mm -hmm. you know? And it's fun to delight and shock people. Isn't it? Yeah. And when you get uh, 
uh, accolades. It's funny, I find it uh, double-edged because you, you get accolades and at the same time you're like, Oy, now what? You Always. Know? You know? Always. Do you feel that? Yeah, I'm a lot better mm -hmm. because I've been run over by a truck a few times <laughs> along the way. Right. I'm a lot better at, at being in the moment and mm -hmm. taking in the good things people say. Mm -hmm. you know, there's often a, a barrier to just opening yourself to a moment when someone said that was really great or it meant something to me or how fabulous or whatever it is and you're kind of edging away, you're afraid it will ruin you or whatever. Mm -hmm. Not anymore, you know. Okay. I'm I'm much better at taking that in, and not going. Oh yeah, but I've got to do it again, you know. Whatever, mm -hmm. which can be part of the, you know, it's like the sand in the in the making the pearl. You know, mm -hmm. the irritation of that can create the pearl. Mm -hmm. But I'm more interested in the pearl than I was before. Well, I, I I actually will say to myself, be there, be in the moment with this person who wants to give you something, yeah. which is, thank you. Yeah. That was great. And, and I now can go, thank you, it's great. You know, I can, I can now reciprocate back mm -hmm. and then go through the hell of whatever the next one is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which you always feel. Okay, in your play, The Last Dog of War, you have a line, I've always taken my dilemmas to the theater. I really think it's the only place where I've ever learned anything. So let's take a look at some of the dilemmas you've taken to the theater, and I'll just, I'll just take a few. Okay. And you tell me, just spot, just give me a sentence about what you think you've learned, okay? Just, but go, okay, you're good at improvising. Okay. Les mots d'anglais. Fashion. Okay, uh, Jessica? The dark side. Uh, the darling family. Relationships. Brother Andre's heart. Montreal, Catholicism. The Duchess. Ambition. Uh, the baseball play. Men. Hmm. Alien creature. Myself as an artist. And Age of Arousal. Women. Hmm. That's great. <laughs> That's kind of like, uh, I think I should do that experiment with everybody. <laughs> That's great. Like, uh, it's so true. It's interesting to see that there's a line. There are Andrew, we're cold now. I know. We have to stop. I know, we have to stop. I was just going to say, like, there's yes. interesting, like, lines between yeah. the different places that you do. Yeah, yeah. And I'm even surprised at my answers. Nervous. I know, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, darling.